This is section 8.6, which is three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. We're going to talk about three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates, distance, distance and midpoint formula, equation of a sphere, planes and other surfaces, vectors in space, and lines in space. So the first thing to look at is the point. So if we have a point X, Y, Z in Cartesian space, we think of it if you have your right hand, it's curving in the direction of x to y, and then your thumb points up in the z direction. So this is how we are going to um, orient our points when we draw these and what you should be visualizing. Okay, and then you can see there are eight different spaces, so eight octants that are created by the coordinate planes. Um, so instead of having like just your x, y axis and having four quadrants, we now have eight octants since we're adding in a whole nother um, dimension. Okay, so distance formula. This should be very familiar to distance formula in two dimensions. All the only difference here is that we're adding the z coordinates so that we subtract, find the difference between the two z coordinates and square it. So otherwise, it's the same as our two-dimensional distance formula. Midpoint, same thing. Same as the midpoint formula in two dimensions, only we're adding that z part of the coordinate. Okay, so calculating a distance and midpoint. So we have the point 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. So to find the distance between p and q, we're going to do... 1 minus 4 squared plus 2 minus 5 squared plus 3 minus 6 squared. So that ends up being 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 3, well, 9 plus 9 plus 9. That'd be negative 3 squared for each of them. So that would be the square root of 27, which reduces to 3 squared of 3. Or if you're asked for an approximate value, decimal value, it's about 5.20. Okay, and then our midpoint. So midpoint would be, we would take 1 plus 4 over 2, 2 plus 5 over 2, and 3 plus 6 over 2. So that would be 5 over 2, which would be 2.5. This would be 7 over 2, which would be 3.5. And this would be 9 over 2, which would be 4.5. Or you could write them as simplified fractions as well. Okay, our next, so this is a drawing lesson. Um, this is just kind of some things that when you're more, so when you're looking at a picture, you understand what they represent. So um, you'll notice that if they're, if you're drawing a break in the line, it's showing what's behind the other one. So, um, CD would be behind AB in that picture, where in this picture, AB would be behind CD. This is more drawing lesson. So, um, if you're drawing a kind of dashed line, it shows that that is below the plane. Whereas you can see the broken plane shows that that line would be above the plane. And then if you drew it this way, it would symbolize the line in the plane. And we dashed is the hidden part. So you can draw your shape first and then put the axis in second. Okay, so standard equation of a sphere. So just like a circle. So a circle was x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The standard equation of a sphere, given a center hkl, would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared equals r squared, if the r is your radius. So our example, find the standard equation of a sphere with center at 1, 2, 3 and radius 4. That would just be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z minus 3 squared equals 16. Okay, equation for a plane. So an equation for a plane in Cartesian space, ax plus by 
plus CZ plus D equals zero. So A, B, and C are all not are not all zero. And every first degree equation in three variables represents a plane in Cartesian space. So an example of this, sketching a plane in space. So if we're sketching the graph of 12x plus 15y plus 20z equals 60. So what you would want to do is plug in 0 for your other variables. So for example, if I plug in 0 for y and z, then I have 12x equals 60, and that would be x equals 5. Um, I would get 15y equals 60, so that means y equals 4, and I would get 20z equals 60, which means z equals 3. So that tells me this is the point 5, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, and 0, 0, 3. So you can see there it kind of forms a plane, a triangular plane with those three points, and that um, would be so that represents that equation of a plane in space. Okay, so vectors in three dimensions. So vectors in three dimensions, just like we talked about distance formula and midpoint, are going to be very similar to vectors in two dimensions. So this is how we'd write it in component form, v1, v2, v3. You can see a picture down here below. Um, our unit vectors, i, k, and j. Um, and then this, this would be vector v, um, which would have that v1, v2, v3. All the same rules. So addition, we're just going to add the components. Subtraction, we're going to subtract the components. Magnitude of vector v in three dimensions will be the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared. So you're, again, you're squaring all the, com the components and adding them together. Dot product, v1 times w1 plus v2 times w2 plus v3 times w3. And then same unit vector, you take the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. Okay, so this last one is, we're going to go through slow because this is probably the most complicated thing that we're going to do here. So equations for a line in space. So if L is a line through the point P0 in the direction of a non-zero vector V, then point P, X, Y, Z is on L if and only if. So we have two forms here. So we have vector form, which is R equals R0, R sub 0 plus TV, where R is X, Y, Z, and R sub 0 is just your vector x0, y0, z0, or parametric form, which is going to give you a value for each, your x, your y, and your z. Okay, where t is a real number. So we're going to work through an example of this. So it says, using the standard unit vector i, j, and k, write a vector equation for the line containing the points a, negative 2, 0, 3, and b, 4, negative 1, 3, and compare it to the parametric equations for the line. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out vector v, which is going to be my vector between the two points a and b. So for that, we know we just are subtracting the components, so it would be 4 minus negative 2 and negative 1 minus 0 and 3 minus 3. So that gives me the vector 6, negative 1, 0. Okay, next I am going to find r0, r sub 0, which is our origin to point A. So this is the vector from the origin to point A. So since our origin is just 0, 0, 0, it's going to just be negative 2, 0, 3 because if we're subtracting zero, it's not going to change anything. Okay, so then to find r, we would take r sub zero plus t times b. So that's going to be negative two, zero, three, plus t times six, negative one, zero. So now we're just doing our scalar multiplication with t and then adding it to adding vector addition. So this would become, oops, 
This would become negative 2 plus 6t, 0 plus negative 1t, and 3 plus 0t. So then if we want to put that into our ijk, we can write that as negative 2 plus 6ti plus negative 1t, I don't need to put the 0, j plus 3k. So that would be um, my vector, standard unit vector, ijk, or that would be my vector form, vector equation um, for the line that contains those points. Now if I want to write it in parametric form, so we use it going back to, so our x0, y0, z0 is our original point A, so that would be negative 2, 0, 3, and then our ABC is our vector between them, so that would be 6, negative 1, 0. So our parametric equations would be x equals negative 2 plus 6t, because that's we're getting the negative 2 there. We're getting the c, the 6 from the a. So y would be 0 plus or minus, I can write 0 minus 1t. And z would be 3 plus 0t. So you should notice a connection between our parametric equations and our vectors that we just found. So the different equations for a line in three dimensions. Okay, 